All right, we're calling this segment The Truth Will Set Them Free. And by them, I mean anybody who's not MAGA. Not MAGA. If you're not MAGA, that's okay. You're welcome. Uh, you may get irritated watching this show from time to time. I'm MAGA. You might be MAGA. MAGA is great. But you know what really makes leading Democrats upset? When Donald Trump starts talking to people, directly to people who aren't MAGA, who aren't Republicans, who may not identify as conservatives. Look, it's going to take more than MAGA probably to win this election. Independents, maybe even some Democrats. And when President Trump makes the case to them, it's beautiful. I am running to be president for all of America, not half of America, because there is no victory in winning for half of America. Together we will launch a new era of safety, prosperity, and freedom for citizens of every race, religion, color, and creed. The discord and division in our society must be healed. We must heal it quickly. As Americans, we are bound together by a single fate and a shared destiny. We rise together or we fall apart. In an age when our politics too often divide us, now is the time to remember that we are all fellow citizens. We are one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. I'm here tonight to lay out a vision for the whole nation, to every citizen, whether you're a young or old man or woman, Democrat, Republican or independent, black or white, Asian or Hispanic, I extend to you a hand of loyalty and of friendship. Together, we will lead America to new heights of greatness like the world has never seen before. Loyalty and friendship. I love that part. That was at the convention. President Trump doesn't normally, though, give that kind of speech. There are lines and sections and paragraphs about this kind of stuff and reaching out to the other side. Hey, the Inauguration Day speech, that was a classic, and it was designed for the American people. And when he starts talking like that, you know who gets really, really threatened? Democratic elites. Actually, during this speech, Barack Obama was angry and mad. So was Hillary Clinton. It was beyond, beyond that they just, you know, lost the election. It was this guy came in from the outside, and he's going to blow it all up for us. And look, he's saying things that the people like. So I think there's an opportunity here. We all love the rallies, right? And actually, I really encourage my friends, audience, everybody should watch more of these rallies. You watch them from beginning to end, you learn a lot, and they're a lot of fun. And he, he gives them relentlessly, as he should. But I have an idea. One night, one night only, sometime between now and the election, actually probably sometime between now and the next 10 days, because we are running out of time, he needs to, my advice, he knows what he's doing. It's just an idea. Sit down and give a speech in this kind of setting, maybe behind a desk, no one else in the room, a direct conversation between him and independents and maybe some Democrats, people who are not MAGA. Because I believe if they're exposed to the truth, they're going to give him an overwhelming victory in a couple of weeks. So I, I wrote a little something, all right? It's a suggested speech for President Trump. And let me know what you think, all right? And I, again, it's designed not for us. We're already on board. It's designed for those who have been lied to about Trump, right? Who have just believed all the negatives and watched fake news and they believe all that stuff. So here it goes. Three weeks from tonight, the American people, those who haven't voted by mail, will go to the polls. No one can say that I have not relentlessly and strongly communicated my plan for a safe and prosperous and, yes, great America. Those who identify with the MAGA movement, the Make America Great Again movement, know where I stand on the issues. In politics, that's called the base, and I love them, and quite frankly, they love me. I may throw in a little bit of Trump, uh, Trump accent here. But tonight, I wish to speak to those who have not yet made up their minds about who to vote for, and also those who perhaps uh, have already decided to vote for my opponent, Kamala. But I ask that tonight you please hear me with an open mind and an open heart. 
I love our country. I love our Constitution. However, our government, and by that I mean the unelected bureaucrats whose loyalty seems to be to no one other than their own jobs, have perpetrated vicious lies against this country. And it's been happening way before I entered politics. It's been happening for decades, at least. Our government has engaged in abhorrent mistruths and actions that have destroyed lives. During World War II, innocent American citizens who happened to be of Japanese descent were locked up in prison camps. They committed no crime other than having Japanese ancestors. This cruel and hideous scar was ultimately officially apologized for and reparations were appropriately paid to those affected. But this is just one immoral episode of the behavior of the government of the United States. In the 1950s, the government, the CDC actually, conducted the reprehensible Tuskegee syphilis study, which was unethical, wrong, and inhumane. They deceived people, young, poor, black men. The researchers misled these participants, many of whom were suffering from syphilis, and told them they were being treated for bad blood while withholding effective treatment for syphilis, even after penicillin became widely available. They were exploited, they were lied to, and they were discriminated against. And this lasted all the way until the 1970s. When the great John F. Kennedy was assassinated, the FBI and our intelligence community were quick to blame a single solitary gunman, Lee Harvey Oswald, with carrying out the murder of the 35th president of the United States. Today, virtually no one believes that to be true. Yet the government repeated the lie for decades and to this day refuses to release all of the documents it has about what really happened. And by the way, President Trump, I will immediately upon taking office sign an executive order that will compel the intelligence community to release all relevant documents. Now, many people have forgotten that President Richard Nixon sought peace with our enemies. His historic overtures for peace with the Soviet Union and China helped make the world a safer place. But as Nixon himself has said, peace was not something the permanent deep state government wanted. I call it the swamp, but it was the same thing back then. Until Nixon's dying day, who was a friend of President Trump's, who served his country in the Navy, Nixon did, in the House of Representatives, the Senate, the Vice Presidency, and the Presidency, he was convinced that the CIA engineered the Watergate break-in, and a growing number of scholars agree with that hypothesis. The deep state did not want peace, and they revolted against Nixon. In this interview, Richard Nixon reveals his suspicions and another motive the CIA may have had to end his presidency. I must say, too, the CIA had motive. Uh, it was no secret that I was dissatisfied with the CIA, with its reports, and particularly uh, with their appraisals of Soviet strength and our other problems around the world. You think they feared you? No question about it, and they had reason to. I was going to shape up that organization and the Defense Department, the whole government for that matter. He was going to gut the deep state. I, uh, I don't think they like that. They still don't like that. More recently, the vast and wide intelligence community, working with other spy services throughout the world, either knowingly or mistakenly reported that Iraq, under Saddam Hussein, operated an active chemical weapons program and maintained huge stockpiles of these nightmare poisons. That proved to be utterly and totally wrong, but for that mistake or falsehood, we still don't know, Nearly 5,000 young Americans were killed, nearly 40,000 wounded, and hundreds of thousands of innocent Iraqis lost their lives. Yes, innocent Iraqis lost their lives or were grievously wounded. And after that horrible strategic catastrophe that set our country back so far and destabilized the Middle East, President Trump and the swamp joked and laughed about it. Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. <laughs> nope, no weapons over there.
Maybe under here. <laughs> President Trump, of course. I've been campaigning hard, everybody. So I, President Trump, came to Washington with a fervent belief, however, in the goodness of our country and its capacity for greatness, but also a naive faith that the government would be supportive or at least not actively disruptive of our efforts to help America. Two weeks before I was sworn in as President of the United States in January of 2017, Senator Chuck Schumer made one of the most damning but least noticed admissions by a senior member of the United States government ever. He's taking these shots, this antagonism, yep. this taunting to the intelligence Let me tell community. You, you take on the intelligence community, they have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. So even for a practical, supposedly hard-nosed businessman, he's being really dumb to do this. The incoming president of the United States was critical of the intelligence product of the intelligence community, and they were vowing to take revenge. You know, I did not fully comprehend the numerous plots that were underway to attempt to sabotage my administration even before I took office, but Schumer very much seemed to be in the know. My only crime was that my loyalty was to you, the American people, and not to some deep state apparatus that few fully comprehend in size and scope. I go through all that to establish for all of us, we know that the government can lie, has engaged in massive propaganda and brainwashing campaigns. And I believe it's happening again. Today, another great fraud is being perpetrated against the American people, a massive psychological warfare campaign. The hysteria, deliberate distortion, and media sensationalism over one day in our country's history.